Huckleberry. It's Westview Warrior Basketball streaming live on LaGuanaMedia.com. This is Jerry Hosteller along with Jamie Miller. And tonight it will be game two of the 2023-24 season for both the Westview Warriors and the host team, the Northridge Raiders. The Warriors came away with a road win at Bethany on Tuesday night by defeating the tenacious Bethany Bruins by a score of 66-54. Scott Rodiker's Northridge Raiders traveled over to Elkhart, Northside Gym in Elkhart on Tuesday evening and also picked up a win in their opening contest by defeating the Elkhart Lions by a score of 83-60. So both Westview and Northridge will be trying to keep their winning ways going tonight as they buy for a win here on the North Ridge Hardwood. Tonight's game sponsor is West Weaver Furniture, rather, with two locations in Shipshawana, south of US 20 on County Road 075 North and in the Davis Mercantile on Main Street in downtown Shipshawana. The pregame sponsor for this evening's game is JNR Solutions, providing unlimited internet connection no matter where you live. Our halftime sponsor is Pizza Depot in Millersburg, and their new location will be opening soon right here in Middlebury. This evening's game is also brought to you by Shipshawana Trading Places, featuring the Shipshawana Antique Auction every Wednesday beginning at 9 a.m. Hyde Auto Body, U.S. 20 West in LaGrange by Yoder Crossroads, located south of Shipshawana on the southwest corner of State Road 5 and U.S. 20. Emma Warehouse in downtown Emma. Tiffany's Restaurant on East Lake Street in Topeka. Stitzman Power Equipment on US 20 in Shipshawana. Freedom Finish Works in Topeka. Also by Shipshi Automotive Service. They thrive by focusing on the fastest high quality auto repairs for your car or truck. Just south of US 20 on State Road 5. LaGuana, your local creative services provider. Tonight's game is also brought to you by Animal Care Clinic of Topeka, and they're located directly across from the Topeka Sale Barn on East Lake Street in Topeka. Jerry Standard Service in downtown Middlebury and Southwind Flooring featuring carpet, hardwood, laminate, tile, natural stone, LVT, and area rugs. Located at 7300 North, 1000 West in Shipshawana. Today's game is a presentation of LaGuana Media and the Indiana High School Athletic Association Champions Network. We'll be back with today's JNR Solutions pregame show right after this 30-second timeout. Weaver Furniture Sales in Shipshawana invites you to visit their expanded showroom filled with a complete line of solid hardwood custom-made furniture for your entire home. You'll also find a wide selection of recliners, couches, chairs, and many more home furnishings to suit anyone's taste. Weaver Furniture, located just south of US Highway 20 on County Road 75 North. Weaver Furniture sales in Shipshawana, family owned and operated since 1989. Tonight's Westview pregame show is brought to you by JNR Solutions, providing unlimited high speed internet no matter where you live, call them at 574-349-7673. Get into the Northridge game tonight. Let's talk a little bit about the victory over at Bethany on Tuesday evening. Uh, they gave us a little bit of a tenacious battle there, but uh, we came out on top, and that's the important thing. But give us your assessment of the basketball game. Yeah, they, uh, they shot it really well. Uh, they compete really hard. Uh, they're fundamentally sound. Uh, they had some size and they were physical with us. So, you know, they, you know Coach Mass has them doing a lot of things, you know, a lot of things well. Um, we had to make some adjustments on the fly in the game, and our guys handled that well. Um, you know, and they continued to fight and were, were resilient that whole night. So uh, it, was, it was good to see our guys in a tough environment, um, you know, compete hard um, and finish a game well. Well, something sometimes we get overconfident when we go over there in the first game or kind of looking ahead to the Northridge game. But the kids, like you said, adjusted really well and uh, didn't let that overconfidence defeat them there. Tonight, you have a big NLC school in Northridge. Uh, they defeated Elkhart on Tuesday night, what, 20 some points? 20, I think. Yeah. yeah. Uh, had four guys, or five actually, in double digits in the scoring department. Uh, so what do you look for with Northridge tonight? Well, they're, they're one of the best teams that we'll see all season, um, which is, is good for us. Um, you know, we'd obviously like to have a little more time to prepare. That's, that's how we feel, you know, most games going in. But, uh, 
Uh, they play at a really high pace. Uh, they work incredibly hard. They're quick. They can shoot it. Um, so that's, that's going to make it really tough on us to defend the perimeter. Um, it starts with our transition defense. If we do that well and we can kind of slow them down there and they don't get easy stuff before our defense is actually set up, you know, that's, that's going to be a, a big factor for us in the game. And then limiting deflections and turnovers and things like that. If we can do that on the offensive end, uh, we should be able to end up getting a shot that we like. And, and when we're able to get a shot, we thankfully have some good shooters. So usually it works out for us. Um, but yeah, they're, a, they're a, uh, an aggressive team, a quick team. Uh, and they're going to they're going to try to speed us up every way they can. As far as our size, I've got a guy that sizes up well with Zep, in fact, a former teammate, I guess. Yeah. But uh, so we should be able to handle them on the boards. And our quickness, is, they might be a little bit quicker. Or where are we there? I don't know. I don't know if that's the case. No. Yeah. Um, it seems um, like we're pretty well matched up. Yeah. Yeah. I I think I think they're quicker than what we are. Um, and it's, you know, the, the NLC schools, they're used to playing at a, a little bit different pace uh, and a little different physicality just because they're always playing 4A schools. Uh, and we don't necessarily see that. You know, we played Bethany with their physicality, but that's a 1A school. Um, so it is different. And that's something that is good our guys get to see. And I think it makes us tournament ready, uh, which is important. But you're, you're, we're still at the point in the season where we're just excited to see kind of what we, how competitive can we be? And what areas can we learn from so that way we can grow and, and get to where we win another sectional and hopefully hopefully more than that. Was there anything that came out of Tuesday night's game that you needed to correct or wanted to make adjustments coming into the game tonight? Yeah, we were, with our defense, we were trapping the ball screen in the middle of the floor, uh, but they had a lot of shooters. So we switched from doing that to just hedging. Um, and when we made that change, I felt like we guarded the perimeter a little bit better. Also, um, you know, we ended up finding out we, we put Caden Grau on uh, on uh, their best player, number four, Chup. Mm -hmm. um, and his length was kind of bothered him a little bit towards the end of the game. Uh, that was after, I think, Wade fouled out, or maybe it was Luke that fouled out. But uh, um, when that happened, that was, that was good to see that we can put that length on a guard, and, and he was able to, to kind of corral him for a couple minutes. Right. Uh, Northridge has some perimeter shooters, obviously, with uh, all – or five of the guys in double digits, or yeah, double digits last last game against Elkhart. Uh, so how does that affect your your defense tonight? Do you have to come out more on them? Yeah, you've got to you've got to come out more. You've got to be a little bit less in help. Uh, you can't over help because as soon as you do take that extra step, they kick it to a guy that's wide open. Uh, our closeouts are going to have to be really good tonight, and then also a lot of long shots means long rebounds. Uh, so we got to make sure that we block out a little bit. A little bit further um, than what we're used to. We saw a little bit of a zone. I thought we detected that on Tuesday night. Is that something you're going to work in when it when necessary or when you think it's best? So we did that against Bethany, uh, a one-two-two zone. We did that whenever they put in they put in like three bigs in the same lineup. So we went and pressured them whenever that happened. Um, here it's going to be really tough to do that. Um, that's almost like a, a last resort type thing because they just have so many guards that can that can knock in shots. Um, and I don't know if I don't know if that one two two would necessarily bother them the same. Their guards are maybe a little bit bigger than what uh, Bethany's guards were. I think twenty two Bales is their big guy. I mean, he's got he Best scored, player, yeah, yeah. he had more rebounds than anybody else as well. Is there anything special you need to do with him, like help defense or? Well, it's still kind of the same, just because everybody else can still shoot it. Um, now we've got we'll have Luke on him tonight, um, and it, you know we're excited to see Luke step up to that challenge. Everybody came out of Thanksgiving in pretty good shape. Yeah, yeah, I think so. We have we have uh, Camden Yoder back. Okay, as well. so he's, he's well, and everybody's yeah, your full strength. Yeah, yeah. Back All right. Strength. Good luck tonight, Coach. Thank Hope you. you come out of here with a victory. Yeah, I appreciate it. That was Coach Pribble of the Westview Warriors. We'll be back with more from Northridge High School right after this thirty-second timeout. Are you looking for unlimited high-speed internet? with no contract and no credit check. No matter where you live, it's available. Bringing America together. JNR Solutions, internet service provider. Call them at 574-349-7673. We're back at Northridge High School. Good to have you along tonight. Jerry Hostetler with Jamie Miller. Both teams out on the hardwood getting in their pregame warm-ups. Westview and Northridge both undefeated at this point with one game under their belt. 
And Jamie coming over here, Northridge has always been tough. They lead the series not by much, though, being the bigger school. I think it's 21 wins to uh, 17 for Westview. Yeah, 21 for – and, of course, that's recent history. I mean, if you go way back, it's, it's a little different than that. But I think that's the last, what, 30-some years. But uh, it's always a rivalry game with two teams in their respective backyards. So looking for a pretty good game tonight. Northridge is always a measuring stick kind of for where you're at as a program uh, or for the season, I, I should say. You know, you – Typically, we play Bethany, and in recent years, it's been not competitive. And so you think right. you're pretty good, and then you come and play Northridge, or they come over there, and, you know, they have a good uh, basketball tradition and and play very hard and usually well against us. And so it really shows you where you are. And, you know, that pregame interview, you, the tough thing about Northridge is always your second game of the year. Right. You don't really right. know. You haven't had a lot of chance to scout them. You don't know how they match up against certain teams. You know, they, they beat Elkhart by 23. Well, what's Elkhart like? Right. We have no idea what kind of defense do they play. Are they young? And so anytime a high school team puts up 83 points and you got five guys in double figures, that's pretty a good against a 4A school. Gets your school. attention. Yeah, it gets your <laughs> attention, definitely. So I think uh, just watching them warm up out there, and just they're, they're just aggressive. They have several shooters with quick, quick high releases, which you know, typically bodes well for getting shots off in transition and and um, and confidence as a shooter. So uh, I'm really excited to see this game. This could be a, a fun one to watch for fans, whether you're here, whether you're uh, watching on on uh, on the air. But you know, uh, Radiker played last week, last year, as a uh, sophomore. He might even played some as a freshman. Just a confident young kid, point guard, and uh, I really like him as a player. And then, of course, uh, Bales, the, the son of the AD, and uh, he's just very talented, left-handed player, which sometimes makes it a little bit harder to guard him because yeah. they move different than what you're used to. But, um, you know, I yeah, they're going to, especially on their home floor, I think it's their home opener tonight. Right. And they're going to uh, push it up and down the floor. It's not as big of a Northridge team as we're used to seeing. Oh, you know? yeah. If, uh, I, I, would, I didn't look at the lineups, but I would guess we're bigger on average by position. They have a 6'2". They got a 6'6". Six, six. Uh, we have that, too, and then some. Right. So, no, I think we match up size-wise right and, with them. Yeah. And that's probably why they're running a little bit more. Right. They're, they're a little quicker and, and skilled at ball handling and shooting, and they're going to – going to give it all all they got you know uh if they're gonna they're gonna hit threes they're at home they're good shooters they're gonna hit some you can't stop everything but the key is to make them uh hit that shot with a hand in their face now when they're out there they're down there warming up they're shooting shots from five to eight feet behind the line <laughs> yeah so they it are looks like their range is <laughs> not limited to right at the three-point line yeah, and they're going down too a lot so, of yeah line. and so you know i think in watching our team in preseason and even the other night a little bit, one of the the concerns early on is can we stay in front of quicker teams on the perimeter? Because you can have all the defensive strategy in the world, but if you can't stay in front of your man and they get in the lane, especially if they got you spread out 25 feet from the basket, it opens up everything. Right. And so that is going to be critical tonight as, as we go forward. So. Interesting to watch that and uh, to see, you know, we do have a big guy in the middle that can help dissuade some of that penetration, but uh, you can't do it alone. So uh, that'll be key. So two of the Northridge players had three threes on Tuesday night at Elkhart, and that was Rodiker, who you mentioned, Jamie, the coach's son, and also Bales, the athletic director's son, as you mentioned as well. They both had three threes. So they're, they're three-point shooters, but that's not where it ended. They had a few other guys that had threes, too, but not not to the, uh, not to more than a couple. Okay. So, uh, yeah, they, they've got some good perimeter shooters, and uh, like Coach said, they're quick. So it should be an interesting ball game tonight. And uh, early in the season, I mean, we're both undefeated. Big game tonight. This will be a big game for Westview to win. Uh, give them some momentum going into conference play. Their next game would be with uh, Terrabusco. So we'll see what happens tonight. 
And we're going to take a break here, and Jamie will be back with his keys to the game for this Northridge Westview game for 2023-24 right after this 30-second timeout. Visit the new Yoder Crossroads Complex in Shipshawana. Start your day off right with locally roasted coffee at Five Lakes Coffee. Speedy drive through or enjoy the aroma and coffee inside. Breakfast and lunch at the Corn Crib Cafe offering daily lunch specials and featuring Yoder popcorn, quality popcorn since 1936. Homemade caramel corn and free samples while you browse our gourmet shops. That's Yoder Crossroads, 5 and 20, Shipshawana, Indiana. Some of the keys to the game tonight, I think. We touched on it a little bit uh, at the last uh, segment, but play composed and block out the crowd. Uh, Coach mentioned that in his pregame interview about the crowd at Bethany, and it was a good crowd. Yeah, it was. We're expecting big things this year over there, and we overcame that, and we uh, were able to fight through a tie game midway through the third quarter and make key plays, make some adjustments. Well, tonight's a bigger crowd. Right. Tonight's a better team. And so can we stay composed? If they hit back-to-back -back threes and the crowd's going crazy, do we come down and get a good shot out of it and not just try to jack up a three to match what they're doing? Because we like to run, we like to play fast yeah, as well. Yeah, we do. Yep. So number two, don't give Northridge second shots. When they have you spread out and they can penetrate and kick, sometimes it's, it's harder to block out because you got to go get your man. You can't just turn and, and block him out. So don't give them second shots because if they get offensive rebounds and they're all spread out and they kick it out to one of their shooters, that's the best time to shoot a three when you get a kick out rebound. So I think that's going to be key to limit the amount of times that that happens. All right. That will do it for the pregame show tonight. And tonight's pregame show, of course, was brought to you by JNR Solutions, providing unlimited high-speed Internet no matter where you live. Call them at 574-349-7673. We'll be back with more from North Ridge High School and take a look at tonight's starting lineup and our national anthem coming up in just two minutes. No. Now's the time to get a great deal on taking care of your property. You need the number one rated reliability of Kubota compact tractors so you can do it all and do it right. Z-Series mowers that deliver a quality cut and Sidekick utility vehicles where durability meets speed. Right now, bring home select Kubota equipment for zero down, 0% zero APR for up to 84 months and save up to $1,400. Thirty now, a little bit around thirty-five hundred, five hundred dollars. Hear the calls of the auctioneers at the Shipshawana Antique Auction every Wednesday at nine a.m. Feel the thrill as six to nine auctioneers showcase a variety of antiques, collectibles, treasures, and more. Whether in search of a unique find or something for your next DIY project, you'll find it at the Shipshawana Auction, and it's different every week. Bid on thousands of items from pickers from all over. To learn how to buy or sell, visit ShipshawanaTradingPlace.com. Going once, twice, sold on the best deals at the Shipshawana Antique Auction. Auction. And we're back at Northridge High School. Good to have you along tonight. We're just moments away from the tip-off for tonight's game. We've got a great crowd on hand. Uh, looking across from us, we're up here on the mezzanine, the second level here at Northridge. And this would be, what, the uh, east side of the gymnasium. And uh, we're getting set to uh, for our national anthem and then the starting lineups for tonight's game. Yeah, shout-out to our students again. Man. Showing up. They outnumber Northridge tonight. They do. Great student section this year for Westview. So they're getting lined up down here, ready for the national anthem. The public address announcer is making some pregame messages, and we'll go right into the national anthem for tonight's ball game.
Northridge and Westview going at it, both 1-0 so far this year. Northridge coming off a win at Elkhart and Northside Gym by a score of 83-60 to over the Elkhart Lions. Westview defeated Bethany on Tuesday evening as well, 17, uh, actually, what was that final score? 66-54, Yeah, I that's believe. right. Yep, 66-54, they defeated Bethany in their first ball game. Well, it's two teams that are senior, do, senior. well, Northridge doesn't have a senior. Right. They're dominated by upperclassmen. So what, seven juniors, I think, for Northridge, and Westview has six seniors. First down for Westview, Luke Helmuth, a 6'1 junior. He scored 13 at Bethany. Also for the Warriors, Wiley Minix, a 6'1 senior. He, he was in double figures with 14 points on Tuesday evening. Also in the starting lineup, Wade Springer, who scored four against Bethany, 5'11 senior. The other starters for Westview will be Owen Brill, a 6'1 junior. He scored three. And rounding out the lineup for the Warriors, big guy, 6'6 senior Wyatt Zepp, who led his team in the scoring department with 23 points. And now for Northridge, We'll pick them up as they come out as well. Well, I think we'll get to the lineup here. <laughs> Maybe. I've got quite the uh, want to play some introduction for, here. Yeah. Cam Rodiker, 5'10", junior. 13 points in his first game this year against Elkhart. Number three. Number 10 will be Dylan Springer, a 5'11", junior. He scored five at Elkhart. Next out will be Gideon Campbell, a 5'11", junior. Two points against Elkhart. Number 22 is Mason Bales, their leading scorer on Tuesday evening, as we mentioned, the 6'3 junior. And rounding out their lineup will be their 6'6 sophomore, Brady Scholl, who scored 17 over at Elkhart on Tuesday night. Interestingly, two of the starters were not the ones that scored in double figures the other night. That's right, yeah. So we know they go at least seven deep. They had me scared for a while because I thought maybe they were introducing their whole roster right. you know since it's opening night but no you're right there all right we're ready for the tip off here big guys Wyatt Zepp and Brady Scholl we'll see who can control the tip to begin this ball game Tip is controlled by the Warriors. With the ball, Springer. He'll get it off to Zepp. Working around to Springer. Back up top, Helmut. Owen Brill now down low to come to Zepp. Northridge comes out in a man to man and a turnover on Westview. Unforced. Driving his bails. Go to Campbell. Now back up top, it'll come to Rodiker. Shot by Bales from the top of the key is good. Starting off where he left off at Elkhart. Yeah, Luke's going to have to probably step out on him a little further. He's got a high release, and he kind of leans back on that shot. So it's, it, you can get it off against pressure. Back comes Westview. Brill gets it into the corner to Helmuth. Helmuth tries to drive inside as it blocked away by their big guy, Scholl. Now trying to drive the baseline is uh, Helmuth. And we have a whistle and a foul inside. Yeah, Scholl, nice drive by Luke trying to take advantage of that. He's really looking at the help defense before he makes a drive, and that time the help was nowhere to be seen, so he took it, went right at him. 
Luke controls up top, goes left side to Burrell. Inside Zepp, good move. Reverse layup misses, and the rebound's pulled down by Brady Scholl. He'll get it to Rodiker. That's a nice move, though, by Zepp. Both teams come out in the man-to-man, as anticipated. Inside pass to Scholl, uh, shots up, no good, and rebound Helmut. Back come the Warriors. Zepp fakes, takes it to the free throw line and looks for help. He'll give it off to Helmut. Well, Zepp's going against a little bit better defense than he did the other night, so shots aren't going to come just as easy as they did. Good move inside by Wade that time. Puts Westview on the board, 3-2. to two. Quickly back the other way comes Northridge. Northridge pushing the ball like, a, like Northwood likes to do, where they get it up the side of the court really quickly, even off a of make. Pass inside is knocked away and stolen. Minix came up with it. Still has it in the paint, puts it up, in and out, no good. Rebound Bales, he'll bring it up in a hurry. Campbell. He's got a wide open shot and he takes it. Long, no good. Helmuth with a rebound for the Warriors. Springer out front goes left side to Minix. Brill tried to drive the baseline, no room down there, so we'll get it back out front to Minix. Fake by Zepp, he drives, pulls up, then gives to Springer. Springer again, this time it's a three for Wade. So it's 5-3 Westview. Bales inside, passes up the shot, gives off to Campbell, and he hits a three from the corner right side. We're having to help a little bit too much off of Bales, and Campbell's getting a lot of good shots. Offensive foul called on Helmuth. I don't know about that call. Looks like Bales was still moving. Yeah, he was turned sideways and moving. I think that was uh, in the heat of the moment call. But we're going to have a lot of plays both ways in this game. Definitely up and down. Nobody's trying to hold the ball or anything. James Cranston checks in for Northridge. Coming out will be Brady Scholl. Cranston is 6'1", junior. And we got a freshman in there now for Westview. Austin Slaybaugh. Slaybaugh saw action over at uh, Bethany the other night on Tuesday night. Driving is Campbell. Looking for help inside the lane, gets it out to Bales. Bales behind the back dribble, down the baseline, puts it up, tried to reverse it, can't do it, misses. Ball is knocked out of bounds. Last touch by, it's a foul, it looks like. Wow. I now it's just two foul. guys going for the ball right there. I think they're going to get weight on that one. First foul on Springer, first foul on, second foul on Westview, I should say. Cranston. Gets it to Campbell. Up top, it'll come to Rodiker. Well, Scholl out of the game. It'll be a little more interesting on offense to see how we, we play that if we try to post up Zepp a little bit more. And we have a traveling violation. Good defense error by the Warriors. Rodiker tried to drive the lane. Well, we got some really experienced perimeter defenders out there, you know, and even if a guy's quicker, we know how to play him, and we, we're making it tougher on him than I think. It was one of the things that we needed to do. Luke works it down on the baseline. Good reverse layup by Daniel Yo- or Austin Slaybaugh. Well, he didn't show too many freshman jitters on that move. <laughs> it didn't look like it, did <laughs> Wow, it? nice move. Radiker with the basketball out front. Well, we definitely have a little bit of a length advantage of that, at that matchup there with Slaybaugh on Radiker. Slaybaugh is around 6'1". Radiker is, what, 5'10". One thing Slaybaugh needs to learn to do is that high screen they did that time. He went under the screen. And if um, oh, Helmuth hadn't jumped out on that, that was a wide open shot. So he needs to fight through that screen at the top and not give because they, they will shoot that. Cranston, I guess, picked up the foul there. Number 12? 12, 12, yes. Yeah. Goes over the back on the rebound. Westview up by one, seven, six. Minix works it over to Helmuth. Austin Slaybaugh, the freshman, 
And a pass, in, yeah, shots up and no good by Cranston as uh, Claybaugh's pass was errant and it was stolen. Anticipated well by Cranston. And that's gonna be two fouls on Wade, which is a big loss. One, he's got all, our, all but two of our points and he's playing great defense and handling the ball. Looks like Caden Grau is getting set to check in. That's a little bit, you know, the coach is talking a little bit about the differences in the game between Bethany and, and here and playing a 1A versus a, a 4A school. And, you know, that pass against Bethany probably works. Right, against here, right. you've got athletes that are a little bigger, a little longer, yep. a little better, and it turns into a turnover. Cranston hits them both. 8-7 now, the Raiders by one. Three minutes to go, first quarter. Northridge now in a 1-3-1, half-court trap. Grow into the ball game. Go ahead. Might end up with a, an open three if we can rotate this ball well enough. Wiley is out of the game right now. That could be one reason they went to it. So Helmuth will inbound right in front of the Northridge bench. He'll get it into Brill, not a growl. Back to Brill. Key against a 1-3-1 one, one is get it in the middle, use ball fakes, move the defense. Slaybaugh grabs it. Grow for a three, and it's good. The young guys are doing it. They should, certainly <laughs> are. 10-8, to eight, Westview up two. Bales. As it kicked out of bounds that time by Helmuth. Good defense by Luke. Another reason they might have gone to this one through, well, we do have Scholl in the game now, but originally Scholl was out of the game. Right. Which could help help with the defense against our, our inside game with Zepp. Radiker tries to get it in, knocked out of bounds by Northridge. Now we're going to have a s switch in the call, it looks like. Yeah, I didn't know if he knocked it off Radiker or not. I was hoping. It's going to be Westview ball. They'll be inbounding in front of their bench. Now Luke will come out of the ball game as Wiley Minix comes back in. Bales inbounding to Radiker. He gets it into Scholl. With the basketball now is Johnson who's just checked in. Hayden Johnson, a 6'1 sophomore. Down low. Good defense by Grau, not letting the pass by Scholl get across yeah, the lane. Nice drop that time by Caden to, to stop that weak side pass. Cam Redeker will trigger it in for the Raiders underneath their own basket. Good defense that time by Austin Slavoff. 2.08 on the clock here at Northridge. 10 to 8. Westview with the lead. Shot to the corner is good by Bales. His second three of the evening. Sometimes those inbounds plays are the hardest things to stop, aren't they? Yeah. Especially early in the year. You haven't really seen their plays. Austin Slaybaugh controls out front. Where's number 15 on his Westview uniform? He'll hand it off to Minix. Now right side will come to Grau. Back to Minix. Minix finds an opening, puts it up from 15, misses. Good, good rebound by Zepp on offensive boards. He puts it up. He's fouled. That's going to be two on Scholl. So we get the big guy and a bit of foul trouble here early in the ball game. And in case, I think you mentioned it earlier, but in case you didn't, uh, Zepp spent his, um, I guess, bulk of his career here. Yeah, North Ridge. yeah, exactly. So I imagine getting to play against his former teammates has some intrigue to it. <laughs> I'm sure it does. Probably been thinking about this all day and probably uh, as soon as that North or Bethany game. And I imagine ended. the same from the fans toward him, you know, especially the <laughs> yeah. cheer block likes to. Uh, oh, yeah. Acknowledge some of that. Zep hits both his free throws. Coach giving him a rest right now while Scholl's out of the game. So nice. Nice coaching there by uh, Coach Preble to get uh, Zepp some rest while the other big guy's not in there. Yeah, my scoring pen ran out of ink. I got it. Got a backup? Yep, got a backup. Driving, putting it up, no good as Johnson and the rebound comes down to Minix. I noticed the first drive that got of the game was with Zepp out of there.
Helmut gets it to Grau. Northridge back in their man to man. Mannix drives, gives it off to Brill. Yeah, they're going to call five seconds as Brill looked for uh, help, but he couldn't find it. Yeah, one thing Owen needs to do, he's done that a couple of times, is his moves are not, they're not quick enough. They have to be more explosive. He, he makes a little move, but it doesn't move the defense, and then he's caught in the corner. And so you need to drive that thing really hard or get out of there. Northridge, a chance to take the lead here, and they do on the layup underneath by Cranston. So he has four now, 40 seconds to go first period. 13 to 12, Northridge with a one point lead. Ball stolen away on an errant pass by Slaybob. Bales puts it up, got it to go on the scoop shot to the left side, and he's fouled. Basket will count. And a foul's on Austin Slaybaugh. Well, that was almost a worst case scenario. It was, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Austin needs to resort to some bounce passes here, I think. His, his air passes are getting getting taken. And Bales completes the old fashioned three point play as he hits the free throw. Westview inbounding underneath, or under the pressure of Northridge. Now they'll back off as Luke crosses the timeline. Down to 20 seconds now to go in the quarter. Yeah, they are really shooting the passing lanes, and we have got to handle that. We need to go back door and get some baskets. Go for one here with 10 seconds to go. Slave off with Bales on him out front. Gives off the growl. Another bad pass. Bales again steals it. He'll put up a three and misses at the buzzer. So we played eight minutes here at Northridge High School in this varsity contest between Northridge and Westview. It's Northridge 16 and Westview 12 at the end of the first quarter. We'll be back with second quarter action right after this 60 second timeout. Tiffany's Restaurant on East Lake Street, Topeka. Mouth watering home cooked goodness, all in a friendly down home atmosphere among friends and neighbors. Different daily specials, all you can eat fish twice a week scrumptious buffets featuring our fried chicken and then finish it off with a slice of fresh baked pie. Eat in our large dining room or carry out at 260-593-2988 and now offering delivery within 10 miles of Topeka. Some see a student athlete working hard in the weight room. We see a future leader learning there are no shortcuts to success. Some see a start to a swim meet. We see the starting blocks for life. Proud to keep education in front of athletics since 1903. Back at Northridge High School getting set for the second quarter. Good to have you aboard tonight. Jerry Hostetler with Jamie Miller. Our engineer, Jeremy Anderson tonight. And our cameraman, Michael from Westview. Good to have him here too. Northridge inbounding to begin the quarter. Johnson brings it up. He'll give it off to Mann who's just checked in. Luke Mann, a 6'2 sophomore. Radiker with it now, left wing. He drive, tries to drive on Luke, good defense. Good help by Minix. Now shot from the corner by Johnson and he hits. 6-1 sophomore with 10 at Elkhart. Now we have a kick as Westview tried to advance it up court. It's going to be Westview basketball midcourt. 19-12, the Raiders have the lead. Grau inbounding, gets it into Luke Helmers. Radiker on him, number three. Grau with it. Hawking him is Johnson. Backdoor pass to Zepp, and he's got the layup. 19-14, Northridge with the basketball and the lead. Radiker with it way out front. He'll drive on Luke. 
And he travels, took an extra step on the baseline. Good help defense that time by Minix. Back into the ball game will come Wade Springer coming out. Will be Austin Slaybaugh, the freshman. Growl inbounding against pressure again from Northridge. He gets it into Springer. Springer across the timeline on the pass to Minix. Back to Wade, way out front in the center circle. Hawking him on defense there with Johnson. Now he'll get it to uh, Helmuth on the right side. Luke bounce passes it down on the baseline to Zepp. Wyatt tries to make the move on man. Can't find any space. They get it back out front. Wyatt again with the basketball. He's double teamed, triple team. Looking for the basket, can't find it. He'll give it to Wade Springer now. 19-14. Raiders good move inside by Luke. Can't get the ball to drop and he tips it. But it goes out of bounds. It will belong to Northridge. Or will it? Well, I think they're going to give it to Westview. They are. Luke must have knocked it off of somebody. They must have. <laughs> yeah. I didn't see it, but that's why I'm up here and not a referee. That's right. Helmuth with it out front. Minix in the corner. He'll pop a three from there. Off the front of the iron, no good. And a rebound is chased down by Springer. That is Dylan Springer of Northridge. He'll get it to Cranston. Another three, and it's good for Northridge. It's really starting to heat up now, Jamie, from beyond the perimeter. Yeah, the, the, what the key for them is their defense. They've stopped us from scoring, and that's getting them out on the break, and they're getting open shots. Coach so. Cribble wants to talk it over. 5.41 to go, second quarter. Northridge by eight, 22-14. We'll be back right after this 30-second timeout. Pizza Depot on South Jefferson Street in Millersburg features delicious pizza and breadsticks, along with fresh salads. Dine-in, carry-out, and delivery are all available at Pizza Depot. Pizza Depot, 104 South Jefferson Street in Millersburg. 4-2-4-2-2-9. Both teams out of their huddle as we resume play after the timeout. Called by Coach Pribble. Trying to squelch the momentum here for Northridge. Well, one thing that started us the other night was Zepp being able to score inside. Well, tonight so far, they're really taking that away. They're playing good defense on him. They're collapsing right down on him. The last time they had three guys, one on him, two came from both sides. And Shut him down. There you go. See, there we got some dribble penetration, which collapses the zone and, and allows an open shot. That was Luke with his first points of the ball game, a three. Driving was a big guy, can't get it to go. As Scholl misses that bunny underneath. See if Westview can take advantage of it now. Helmut driving on Radiker. Gets it into the paint and gives it up to Zepp. I was watching him and pre-game warm-ups, and he was not missing from the arc. Of course, that can change once the game starts, but yeah, yes. he's, um, coaches have said he's a really good shooter out there. Long range three, no good by Dylan Springer of Northridge, and back come the Warriors. With the ball is Caden Grau. They're really extending their defense up high on our guys and challenging us. We're gonna run a set play here and try to get some structure going. Luke is fouled down by the baseline. So Westview will be inbounding underneath their own bucket off to the left. Coming back into the ball game will be Gideon Campbell. Checking out will be Brady Scholl for Northridge. Zepp gets the pass out front. He'll hand it off to Wade Springer. Springer looking inside. Now he'll go to uh, Luke out front. Luke's really looking to post up Radiker, but he's not getting the spot. 
Zepp tried to drive the baseline and pass it across. Knocked out of bounds by Northridge. It'll be Westview ball. Northridge should be pretty well prepared for Zepp. They've seen him practice. They know what he likes to do. They know his moves. And so far, they've, they've held him in check. They certainly have. So far, well, Zepp has two from the field and two free throws. Has four. But they're not allowing him to get down low. Right. They're not, he's not getting one-on-ones down there very easy. Nope. Driving into the paint again is Helmuth, oh. and he can't get it to go off the back of the rim. Bales pulls down the rebound. He led his team in rebounds on Tuesday evening as well over at Elkhart in addition to scoring. Bales spin move inside, scoops it up, and he got it again. Yeah, that's where going left. You're not quite used to that as a defender when you can make that spin back. 11 points now for Bales tonight. Zepp with his first three of the night, and it's good. Well, there you go. He said <laughs> yeah. he wasn't missing. Yeah, he didn't miss that one. That's a big shot. He needed that. Good defense by Westby knocking it out of bounds. Just, you know, despite our uncharacteristic turnovers, despite them hitting three after three, we're only down four points. That's right. So that's we're a really right good, in this thing. Really good spot to be in with how we've played. Radiker, the, again, the trigger man for Northridge underneath their own bucket. He'll bounce pass it, pass it into Bales. Bales up top, it'll come to Campbell. Campbell swings it to Radiker. Now he'll drive, put it up, and got it, and he's fouled. Laps on defense there. I don't know about these fouls they're calling. I mean, these are just mystery fouls, but that was a nice move. He had a good first step on that and just took it in there. Wiley Minix picks up his first foul tonight. And that's the first team foul of the quarter. Once again, we'll remind you that each team is allowed five fouls per quarter before the bonus sets in. And then they start all over again in the preceding quarters. Radiker completes a three-point play with a successful free throw. It's 27-20 now. Raiders back up seven. Quickly across the timeline is Austin Slaybaugh. He picks up his dribble. Now he's looking for help. Gets it out of trouble to Minix. He's up again for three, and he hits again. So I'm glad he stayed hot from pregame. He's picked a good time to be hot out there, that's for sure. He sold us in this ball game. 27-23, Westview down by four. This is not one of those games you're going to hold the opponents under 40. <laughs> no. <laughs> so you're going to have to score to win. I don't believe so, no. At the rate we're going, we'll be probably happy to hold them under 60. Camden Yoder has come into the ball game, and he picks up a quick foul. He wears number 13 out there. Hayden Johnson goes to Radiker. 2.30 to go, first half. Bales again for three. Misses off the back of the rim, chased down by Luke Helmuth. Good ball handling, but unfortunately he went over the half court stripe and then back again. I'm not sure he went completely over. What's the rule? You got to go all your body and the ball before you can't go back. I think that where he went wrong is he bounced it into the front court or whatever the our side of the court, and then he went, he uh, pivoted and went back into the backcourt. Yeah, this is a, a good learning game for him. You know, it's a big jump from eighth grade. <laughs> that's all. Well, that's true. Long range three is no good. That one was by Johnson and Westview with a rebound. Warriors down four. Helmuth into the paint, puts it up, got it. Yeah, nice pull up by Luke. You know, last year he had a habit of doing a lot of one-legged shooting. Yeah. <laughs> or shooting off one leg. Right. And he's doing a nice job of pulling up in there. If you can get in there, that's a easy 10-footer. North Ridge tries to get it inside the Bales, knocked out of bounds. Good defense here by Helmuth. Back into the ball game comes Grau. Checking out will be Camden Yoder. Cam Camden had a shoulder issue in that Bethany game, didn't dress. 
Seems to be back in good shape here tonight. Radiker looking to inbound for Northridge underneath her basket. He'll get it in to Campbell. Right back to Radiker with Austin Slaybaugh on him. Nice job closing out that time and cutting off the drive and getting back on the shooter. Bales tried to make a quick move, couldn't on home move, but then the shot's in the air. And good by Gideon Campbell, and that was a three. And he's got a really quick release. His Man. feet and his stance are set when he catches that ball. That was very fast. 30 to 25. Northridge, Austin Slaybaugh hands it off to Grau. Grau tries to get it to Zepp, does. Zepp drives, puts it up, too hard off the glass. Driving was Cranston, gets it to Radiker now to Bales, right back to Radiker on the baseline, he drives. Good passing by Northridge, and then an air ball on a three try by Campbell goes out of bounds, it'll be Westview ball. Well, they definitely moved the ball well. I think we're doing a pretty good job of helping them recover. Staying right in it, 35-25. Yeah, you know, they have good shooters. I don't know that and any guy can get hot and look great, but you know, a few years in the a few years ago they would have some shooters that you couldn't let alone within 25 <laughs> feet. <laughs> That's they hit five out of six. Seems like they had a had one coming every year there for a while. Right. They're gonna go for a one here, run the spread. Try to go in with minimal minimal damage at this point, down five. Nearing the 10 second mark, and we've reached that now in the first half. Slaybaugh with it, with five. He'll force it up from the base, or from the uh, wing right side. Oh. Good job, but Minix can't get it to fall on the putback, and so We've reached the end of the first half here at Northridge High School, and our score at halftime, Northridge 30 and Westview 25. We'll be back with uh, halftime scoring with Jamie right after this two-minute timeout. Some see a student athlete working on a shot. We see a powerful lesson in persistence. Some see a student preparing for success on an exam. We see a student athlete preparing for success in life. Proud to keep education in front of athletics since 1903. job need a refresh? Got too many dings and scratches? Let Hyde Auto Body take care of it for you. No matter the type of vehicle, motorcycle, trailer, or truck cap, Hyde Auto Body's experienced paint specialist will attend to every detail so you don't have to. We aim to be number one in customer service and your satisfaction is always guaranteed. We're located west of State Road 9 on US 20. Hyde Auto Body, a trusted name in the community for over 20 years. Pizza Depot on South Jefferson Street in Millersburg features delicious pizza and breadsticks along with fresh salads. Dine in, carry out, and delivery are all available at Pizza Depot. Pizza Depot, 104 South Jefferson Street in Millersburg. 574-642-4222. Welcome back to Northridge High School. We're at halftime. Westview trails Northridge 30 to 25. Now let's take a look at the individual scoring for Northridge. Cam Radiker, a 5'10 junior, had uh, a field goal and a free throw, a nice three point play for his three. Number 11, Gideon Campbell, had two three pointers uh, for six points. James Cranston had a three, a two, and two free throws for his seven. 
Mason Bales coming in as the leading scorer. Also did that for Northridge in the first half. Two threes, two twos, and a free throw for his 11, so exactly right half of his average. And Hayden Johnson added a three uh, for the final tally for Northridge of 30 points. Uh, for Westview, Wade Springer scored our first five, uh, and that's what he ended with in the first half. Austin Slaybaugh added two on a layup. Caden Grau had, had one three-pointer early in the game for his three. Luke Helmuth added five, a uh, three-pointer and a two-pointer. And Wyatt Zepp leading the Westview Warriors this year with a 23-point average, of course, after one game. <laughs> had almost half of that in the first half. Kind of a slow start, but finished with 10. Two big three-pointers there midway through the second quarter. Uh, also a, a, another field goal and then two free throws. So Westview led by Zepp. I think the one thing that stands out to me with regard to scoring is there is a zero in the column for Wiley Minix. Yeah, that's a little disconcerting. Yeah, so he came in, you know, last year, ended the season really well. And whenever that happens and you lose a key member of your team like uh, Brady Yoder, uh, you're the marked man. Right. And he's the marked man. I think I can see him, um, you know, questioning things out there a little bit. He doesn't just shoot it within rhythm. Mm -hmm. He's um, thinking before he shoots. He's hesitating. He's faking. So he just needs to relax. It's going to come to him. The long season, and he's put in the work, and he just needs to be patient. You know, there's we're rotating eight, nine people in and out yeah. of there. It's a little hard to get into a, a flow. You don't know who's in there, where they're going. Northridge is spreading us out all over the floor. They're trapping, they're pressing, they're they're picking us up across half court. So you know, it'll come. That's, that's right. Uh, that's not his game to really break down break down the defense and drive it to the basket. If he could find a post opportunity to get it, you know, throw it into him or uh, get him going a little bit. That last steal and shot off the backboard just before halftime, uh, that would have been big. I oh, think. that would have been. Yeah. That thing could have gone in, but it didn't. And so, you know, he's played enough basketball. He should have confidence in himself no matter what happens in the first half. And, you know, he came out in at the Bethany game, kind of the same thing. I think yeah. he, I don't remember his first half stats, but they didn't have many points. And he came out in the second half, had some good shots. Luke came out in the second half and really set the tone. Yep. So it's those two guys that are that are the tone setters on this team, and uh, and they need to do that again in the second half. I think our defense has been adequate. You know, Northridge has hit some shots, got 30, but I think it's been adequate. We're, we're keeping it, for the most part, we're keeping ourselves in front of them. It's on offense we're struggling. We're, we're turning the ball over, great shots all the time, and that's something uh, here and player and playing in, uh, I don't know what the Nick. After Irv Pratt. After what? Irv Pratt, their Irv. coach that passed away. I mean, he, he was here for, well, even when it was Middlebury High School, I believe, and he passed away. He's a great coach. Yeah, so Northridge, but, uh, whatever it's called, it's it's a, uh, a tough place to play. Northridge is, is playing well. They got the home crowd behind them, but we're right in there. Only two possessions back, and uh, we need to come out and set the tone. I believe we get the ball to start this half, unless there was a jump yeah, ball Yeah, I think you're right because Northridge, yeah. So, anyway, uh, if you look at that score, the deficit, like you said, two, two possession game, I mean, at least – Two of those turnovers led to Northridge baskets. I mean, that could be the difference right there. Yeah. It's, and they were unforced turnovers. It, they really were. We just, uh, it's uncharacteristic. But, again, we got different people handling the ball. Um, Austin, I thought, did a pretty good job maintaining his composure. But he didn't play much against Bethany. Right. And mean, he's. Anyway. he's The chase down here in the second half. We'll take a break. 
for the second half right after. see a student athlete working on a shot. We see a powerful lesson in persistence. Some see a student. Bam. We see a student athlete. In front of the athletic. Home improvement supplies for your home, RV, or manufactured home don't have no. Emma Warehouse has the products you need at below retail prices, including windows, doors, trim, furnaces, flooring, hardware, paint. Located six miles west of 769 for more information. Back at Northridge High School. Both teams in our huddle now as we get set for the second half. Next ball game, I don't have it here in front of me or do I? It's gonna be Busco and we host them this year and that's gonna be December 1st, which falls on what, next Friday? I believe that's Friday, yes. Yeah. First conference game, I think Cherubusco is down this year again. Westview. Well, it's hard to down. say, you know, they're on the edge of Fort Wayne. They can get, they could get well in a hurry. Well, that's true. But you're right, last year they were down. And uh, Northridge comes out in a standard defense. I believe it's our standard man to man. I think it was the same starters as we had for the for the game. Looks like we got Zepp Springer, Minix, Brill. There we go. Yeah, nice play run that time to get Wiley a shot. Great design by the coaching staff that time to uh, get him going. Shot answered there by Gideon. To guard him, but we did. So the two teams trade threes in the early going of this third quarter. Springer drives, puts up the shot from the left side, misses, Radiker with a rebound. Radiker controls out front. Tipped away, good defense by Springer into the hands of Zepp. Two teams Zepp trade threes the in move. the early going of this third quarter. Zepp fakes the three. Brill with it. Bounce passes it down along the baseline to Helmut. Loop to Springer, back to Loop. Wiley drives into the lane and dishes it off left side. Helmuth with a mm. long range. Three misses. Radiker with a rebound for Northridge. Nice job by Wiley that time to be ready for Campbell. Fake. Good defense by Zepp that time, but shut Scholl off on the baseline. Westview. Trailing 33 to 28. Ball knocked away and a steal by Northridge. And now we have a foul called on the reach in by Luke Helmuth. Or was it just knocked out of bounds? Nope. I think he foul. wrapped him up to stop the fast break. Yeah. It's not a bad play as long as we don't pick up another foul here. <laughs> you know, yeah. Right away. We need Luke out there to keep us going. Bounce pass inside. Scholl puts it up, misses, but he's fouled, and he'll have two shots coming his way. I think that's on Luke. Wow. Two quick ones on Luke. That gives him three now in the ball game. Yeah. Second of the quarter for Westview. And Scholl hits his first. He'll get one more. That's the first point of the night for Scholl. So we held him down really well. He scored 17 at Oakhart on Tuesday. His first point of the contest coming with 5.55 to go in the third quarter. Second shot hits off the back of the rim, but chased down by Bales on the offensive rebound. Pass inside, it goes to Scholl. Scholl right back to Bales. Cross court to Springer. They'll swing it all the way around to Radiker. Now to Bales again for three. He misses. And Drill with a rebound for Westview. Back comes Minix now. 
Brill back up top to Springer. Zeff pull up jumper, good off the right side. Yeah, the ball stolen. Minix with it. So Westview a chance to come back within one with a three here. Zepp inside, has it knocked away, regains possession, gives to Brill. All moves, now Zepp. They're really out on him this half, aren't <laughs> yeah, they? they are, <laughs> yeah. Springer. Addition to Zepp. Zepp to Brill. Zepp needs to put a little more zip on that pass right there. That was <laughs> just floating out there to steal. And I like the patience here. We're not getting anything easy, but we're not forcing it either. Drive by Slayball. He'll put it up. Missed the shot. And he's fouled. That's going to go. Who was that on? Gideon Campbell. Oh, that's right. Slayball at the line. Austin, first appearance at the free throw line. He hits that one. He had four Tuesday against Bethany. He has three tonight so far. Growl into the ball game as Brill comes out for Westview. Second shot in the air. <laughs> and it falls off the front of the rim. No good. Radiker with a rebound. And he ran right over Springer and they play on. I no can't call. believe it. Loose ball, however, picked up by Zepp, so Westview gets it back on the turnover. You don't see a no call there very often. <laughs> <laughs> Something had to be called there. Yeah. Springer to Zepp. Radiker's kind of pesky, but you know what? So is Wade. That's right. <laughs> so they're a good match. Yeah. Zepp inside has a block from behind by Scholl. Yeah, that's really a good matchup in there between Zepp and Scholl. They're really both playing well. Zepp is a little more offensive minded tonight and Scholl's got some nice long arms in there to keep him tamped down a little bit. Scholl comes out now. Slaybaugh all the way out front to Grau. He'll hand it off to Minix. Wiley looks right, goes that way to uh, Springer. Back out front to Slaybaugh. Wiley left open, or Springer rather, and a three for Wade, his second three of the night. He has eight now for the Warriors, and we're all tied at 34. Wade has really just been very opportunistic tonight. My oh, goodness, that man. guy is just four three of the night for Gideon Campbell. He has 12. Six in the first half, and already six here in the second half. He's got to get tired pretty soon, right? <laughs> yeah. His arm's going to get worn out here. Austin Slaybaugh gets it to Wiley. He'll drive it into the paint. A little runner's good by Wiley. Wiley didn't score in the first half. He now has five on that little runner, and he had a three earlier. Nice job by Austin getting out on Bales. That's quite an assignment for that freshman. Driving, putting it up, missing the shot was Campbell. Ball loose and picked up by Wiley Minix. Back comes Wade. And you can see that's not his game. Springer tries to drive it in, but it's knocked away and stolen by Cranston. He'll lay it up and in. I don't think Wade's going to get a call one way or another tonight. No, he got hit pretty hard <laughs> in the lane goodness. there, but no whistle. 39-36, Northridge back up three. Minnick, top of the circle, goes to Slaybaugh. Slaybaugh takes it in. Now he'll try to get it across court, but throws it right into the hands of Johnson. Now it's stolen away by Wade Springer. Bounce pass left side to Grau, and a technical foul is called on Coach Scott Radiker of Northridge. Well, there's been a lot of contact on both ends. And while I can see the Radiker's point, it's happening on both ends, so. But it's going both ways. It is, and the refs has to get, uh, has to get it under control here a little bit. One of 
other refs out there, I'm pretty sure did the JV game as well tonight. Maybe not. Maybe it's just a look-alike. <laughs> anyway. He's playing. Yeah. Minix is at the free throw line, and he hits. Wade now for, with six here in the second half. 2.05 to go, third quarter. Springer comes out. Back in is Helmuth. Brill or Austin Slaybaugh, Grau, and Zepp in the ball game, along with Wiley Minix, who's at the free throw line. And he hits both of those. And Westfield get the ball out of bounds now. Have we had the lead tonight? I don't believe so, because Northridge. Well, I, yeah, we have. We uh, First quarter. Oh, we had, that's right. It went back. And, we had yeah. several lead changes yeah. there in the first quarter. But back it hasn't been a while. Yep. Helmuth bounce passes it to Minix inside. Can't find any room in there. It was Micah Miller who's coming in. Driving. Micah get, picks up the garbage inside, puts it up, misses. Chases it down now. He'll get it out of trouble to uh, Wiley Minix. Minix cross courts at the Grau. Grau down the baseline, and we have an offensive foul going to be called on Grau. That was a flop, but after that technical by Radiker, <laughs> I guarantee they get that. Oh, I hate that. <laughs> uh, is just, that your pet peeve? <laughs> it's just such a predictable occurrence. Yeah. Another so coach gets a technical or makes a point of some sort, they always get the next call. And he did. Yeah, you could see that coming. I mean, that was not – I mean, look at Austin Grau, he, what he weighs. <laughs> and it's flopping as the, uh, what was that, Bales went flying? He <laughs> almost ended up in the bleachers. Shots up and good by Radiker. They're going to call the foul on uh, Slaybaugh. Yeah, now they're getting all the calls. I'll get off my high horse after that, but that just, that's a no call right there. With all the contact we've had in this game, So Slaybaugh picks up his second foul. Yeah, it, it happens time and time again, I know. It's like they, whether they do it subconsciously or not, I mean, it happens. Well, I think it's human nature. Nobody wants somebody mad at you. Right. <laughs> so they're like, well, maybe we are doing it wrong. Growl on the baseline. Looking, you'll hit Springer on the back door, and then it's knocked loose and picked up by Scholl. Yeah, Northridge is doing a good job of stopping our back cuts tonight. We're trying to get it there. It's just not working. Down the baseline, wide open for the shot, and he almost missed it, but Johnson got it to roll in, and now. Yeah, good job of Westry not fouling that time. He had the clear advantage just at that point, let it go. 43-38, Northridge. Every single time Zepp goes out of the game, Northridge gets layups. It does definitely make a difference. Westfield spread it out now with half a minute to go here in the third quarter. Slaybaugh bringing it out almost to the center circle. That will give off to Helmuth. Back to Slaybaugh with 20. Fifteen seconds to go, third quarter. Ten seconds, now Helmuth drives, dishes it off. Good feed to Micah Miller who puts it in off the yeah, glass. nice play. He drew that defense. Now we have a traveling violation on Northridge with eight-tenths of a second on the clock. So it's going to have to be a quick one. Westry doing a nice job of contesting everything. They are, yeah. Making yeah. the ref make a call, not backing down. You know, we've really come back. Every time Northridge surges ahead, we just hang right in there. Well, we got the two big guys in there. I guess can't lob it into Zepp. But we might have to try. Let's see, somebody's gonna have to set a three. Oh, wide open is Grau from the corner, and God, he hits the three. Oh my goodness, <laughs> what a play. Grau was wide open. Yeah, I think Coach Radiker was so, so busy talking to the referees <laughs> yeah. still, that he forgot to line his team up. But uh, yeah, great shot. Great, what a uh, way. Quick what a release, and uh, yeah. 
Well, it's just like we started. We're all tied up. 43-43. We'll be back with a fourth quarter right after this 60-second break. Home improvement supplies for your home, RV, or manufactured home don't have to cost an arm and a leg. Here's a secret the big box stores don't want you to know. Emma Warehouse has the products you need at below retail prices, including windows, doors, trim, furnaces, flooring, hardware, paint, and more. Emma Warehouse is located six miles west of LaGrange in downtown Emma. Call 260-593-2769 for more information. Some see a student athlete working on a shot. We see a powerful lesson in persistence. Some see a student preparing for success on an exam. We see a student athlete preparing for success in life. Proud to keep education in front of athletics since 1903. 43-43 as we begin the fourth quarter on the last second shot by Caden Growl at the uh, buzzer to what? end that third quarter. Yeah, if the fans were asleep before the last two or three minutes of that quarter, they're awake now. <laughs> <laughs> we've had a technical, we've had action, and three at the buzzer. Shoal starts the Northridge fourth quarter off with the drive to the basket strong and gets the basket to go. Just his third point of the night. And now, miscommunication on that pass and Bales with his steal and the breakaway layup. Yeah, that's unfortunate. We come out and just give up a drive and then we give up a turnover. That's just killing us tonight. And a reaching foul, a little bit too aggressive defense there. And that's gonna be called on Radiker. That's only his first. Well, you can see the potential with Austin Slayball. He gets in there and he can drive to the corner of the court and see somebody at the three-point line on the other side. He's really, really sees the court well. He's got some really good natural ability out there. Springer drives, says it knocked away by Radiker, saves it inbounds to Bales. Bales up court in a hurry to to uh, Johnson and he misses the layup, but he's fouled. Yeah, so we're a minute into the quarter. We haven't even got a shot off yet. Wow. Foul goes against Grau, his second. At the stripe is Hayden Johnson with five points tonight. And he hits. It gives Northridge a five point lead at 48 43. And Northridge has scored the first six points of the fourth quarter with that successful free throw by Johnson. Warriors looking at pressure again. Half court trap. Zep in the corner. This time it's no good. Tipped into the hands of Bales. Bales in transition. He'll give it left side to Cranston. Cranston goes back to Bales. Now the shot from the top of the key is good by Johnson. And Rusty wants to talk things over as Coach Tribble off the bench calls timeout. Yep. 6.45 to go in the ball game. All of a sudden, Northridge has gone up nine to begin this fourth quarter. Yeah, it, just, it starts with turnovers. We've got one shot this quarter? Yes. I think. I believe so. And uh, they're getting out on the break, and they're, you know, they're a good team. We've said that before the game. We've held them down pretty well, but you cannot have lapses on the road on offense, which turns into deep uh, transition offense for the other team. So we've got to regroup. We've come back each time they've tried to extend the lead. This is their biggest lead. But uh, just grind it out, get some baskets, and uh, see what happens. 6.45 to go. Westfield inbound underneath the Northridge basket, facing full court pressure from Northridge. Grau inbounding for Westview. He'll get it into Helmer. Springer working against Radiker, crosses the timeline. Well, well, knocked away. Now he's double teamed in no man's land there. He can't get there. Ball tipped, 
Beals puts it up, misses his shot, but he's fouled. Well, we're dribbling right into the worst place on the court you right. dribble when they're going to double team. In our experience, we should be better than that. So we have got to uh, plan a little better here and get the ball inside. If they're going to extend their pressure that far. There's somebody open inside. If we there's just a see him. Bales at the free throw line. If there's a coffin corner in basketball, that's where it is. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's, you don't want to be there. No, we've done it about three straight times, which is, right. you know, I, we haven't really faced pressure. So, again, you find out who you are when you play these kind of games. Bales hits both free throws, and now Northridge increases their lead to 11, 54-43 with 6.25 to go in the fourth quarter. Springer. Trying to get around Cranston, finally does. Good ball work, or good ball handling, and now Grau with a big three. <laughs> Boy, do we need that. Third three of the night for Caden Grau. Driving, putting it up, knocked away from behind. Good defense by Westview as Bales tried to go in for the layup. Wiley Minix, quick pass to Grau, kicked out of bounds <laughs> by uh, Northridge's Hayden Johnson. I don't know what they're looking at. Wiley just got raked across the arm on that pass. I don't know what, uh, I guess if there's no blood, there's no foul. <laughs> and other times you whisper on them and they uh, call it. So, got to play through it. We're going to run a set here and try to get a basket and get us back within striking distance. Helmo tries to drive the flex off of Bale's body and out of bounds. It'll be Westview ball in front of their own bench. 5.48 shows on the clock here at Northridge High School. Pretty much a full house here at Northridge for yep. this basketball game tonight. Yep, great crowd. Two teams about eight miles apart. Crowd to Helmo. Minix down low to Zepp. Zepp tries to drive. He does, but he took one extra step. Had to drive around. He really likes that oh. reverse layup on the other side of the basket, but Scholl's big enough that he can hang with him, and it's, he's struggling tonight with that. So Northridge trying to increase their lead, 54-46. Inside pass, offensive foul as Scholl mows down. Is that his fourth? Helmo. Scholl has three. Okay. He had two early, but he hadn't had one for a while. Nice job by Luke getting us, doing what Luke does. Doing some of that dirty work to get us going. Springer's trapped, gets it out of trouble to Helmo. He has it knocked away, regains possession. Zepp fakes the three. Works down low to Springer. Springer, good feed to Minix. Cut oh, toward the goodness. basket, but he can't get it to go. Bales down the lane. Dishes it off left side to Dylan Springer. Long range three by Johnson. This time they miss. And the rebound to Helmut. Back come the Warriors. Minix to Growl. Growl, Helmut. Good drive to the basket. Puts it up and in. Good <laughs> spinning layup by Luke Helmuth, and he gets the basket to go, and he's fouled. I didn't think that was going to go in, but he had a yeah, little bit of uh, just, spin on it. Yeah, that was a really nice move that time, getting his fourth foul, bringing us back to six. He, um, I think we're going to put Michael Miller in, give Zepp a break while Scholl is out of the game. But, uh, you know, Luke's just taking charge. He took a charge on one end. He came down, brought the ball down, made a play. Took a drive in there, and he's just he's being a good leader out there. Got the big guy in foul trouble on those two fouls. So Luke completes a three-point play. 54-49 now. Westview's cut the lead to five. It was 11 at one point in here in the fourth quarter. Just about halfway through the fourth quarter. Well, Northridge likes to shoot a lot of threes, but they've missed a couple now, giving us some possession to get back in the game. What do they do now that? Well, yeah, Bales, it looks like they were spreading it out a little bit. Then. Yeah, the downside to taking Zepp out is the lane is wide open, and that's that shouldn't happen no matter if he's in there or not. Ball knocked away by Bales, and he dives to try to save it, but can't do it, so it'll be Westview basketball. Well, you love seeing kids play hard no matter what team they're on. And this 
Northridge plays hard, like Coach said they would. They do. And as you mentioned at the beginning of the broadcast, they're all underclassmen. Right. Bales is a junior. Radicker's a junior. Their key players are juniors or sophomores. So what you're saying is we get to see this replay next <laughs> Pretty year. Pretty much. <laughs> Only on our court next year. Well, ball right between the wicket of Austin Slabon. It goes out of bounds. Turnover on Westview, and Northridge will get it. I don't have the stats on turnovers tonight, but we got to be at We're well ahead of 14. what we were at Bethany. Yeah, you know it's, that. it's the single key in this game. Yeah. I mean, we're shooting well, but we're not getting the shots and turning it over. And now with a seven-point lead, Northridge is going to be in no big hurry. And with all those guards, it's going to be hard to take the ball away from them. Now we have a whistle. Timeout on the court. 3.31 to go in the fourth quarter. Northridge 56, Westview 49. We'll be back right after this 60-second timeout. Freedom Finish Works in Topeka specializes in both steel and aluminum. Their 40,000 square foot custom powder coat facility has the flexibility to run everything from one piece custom orders to full production quantities. They also have the unique capabilities of powder coat, plast coat, as well as other highly durable coatings. They are your local source for powder coating. Freedom Finish Works in Topeka. Call 260-593-0204. Visit the new Yoder Crossroads Complex in Shipshawana. Start your day off right with locally roasted coffee at Five Lakes Coffee. Speedy drive through or enjoy the aroma and coffee inside. Breakfast and lunch at the Corn Crib Cafe offering daily lunch specials and featuring Yoder popcorn. Quality popcorn since 1936. Homemade caramel corn and free samples while you browse our gourmet shops. That's Yoder Crossroads, 5 and 20, Shipshawana, Indiana. Yeah. Ready to resume action here in a few seconds. 3.31 to go in the fourth quarter. Westview still in it. 56-49 as our score. Northridge leading. They have the basketball. They'll be inbounding. Hayden Johnson looking to inbound and get it into Radiker. Yeah, they called that timeout. We went to a little, showed a little 1-2-2 two, two press that time, and so they called Big guys back in with four fouls. Shoal. Dylan Springer handles out front. I'm not sure whether he's related to Wade and that family. All right, that's our that's the third foul. So one more we can give before they start shooting free throws. That was on Wiley, his second. Driving is Johnson. They'll get it to Scholl. Now the feed on the baseline. The baseline left wide open, and Dales takes advantage of it. Yeah, you start pressing and trapping a good team, that's what's going to happen. But Nin at this point, we don't have many options. 19 now for Bales. Springer gets it to Minix. Back out front to Helmo. Luke, good twisting shot, fall away jumpers, no good. Goes off the uh, bodies of two of the Northridge players, Bales and Radiker. It'll be Westview ball underneath their own bucket off to the left. Wiley Minix will bring it in for the Warriors. Springer to Helmuth, he drives. Bounce passes are on the baseline. Dangerous pass intended yeah, for Slayball. Not a good pass. We already had Zepp standing there, and then Austin cut right to the block. So <laughs> yeah, it was about six people within ten square feet. Too many bodies in one spot. Long three, no good. Good rebound by Springer. I think Coach Radiker would have probably preferred that shot didn't occur by Springer. <laughs> With a nine-point lead I and would two think minutes so. to go. <laughs> yeah, that's a little questionable. That's a, I bet he's coming out of the ball game. Only possible thing that could happen to bring us back is them taking shots they shouldn't take. Well, Cranston comes in. Johnson comes out. Slaybaugh gets it in to Luke Helmuth. 
He drives around Radiker to cross the timeline. Now he's double teamed, gets it to Springer. Springer tries to feed Zepp on the baseline. Oh, his last touch by Westview, I guess. I well, they're saying we just threw it straight out of bounds, oh, which okay. doesn't even make sense. But I didn't see it very well from here, so. Might have slipped off the hand of Wade when he was trying to deliver that pass. Well, yeah, and Zepp didn't have great position that time. or We didn't have a great angle for that entry pass. Cross-court pass to Cranston. Cranston gets it to Bales deep in the corner. He'll drive the baseline and feed it off to Scholl. And Scholl is fouled by Luke coming past. That'll be number four on Helmuth. Well, a couple years back, Northridge had that team with great shooters, and they had one big guy inside. And they made them very difficult to defend, and they essentially have the same thing this year. They got a lot of shooters and a big guy inside. And there again, it seems like that's the way it is a lot of years. They have yeah. their and that's great. That's why yeah. you, that's why you have good teams, and that's, that's right. We have the same ability this year. We have a good big guy inside, and we got shooters. So we just got to kind of put it all together. Shot off the back of the rim, no good, but rebounded by Northridge. The ball is bouncing their way right now. Double team on Bales, he dribbles right between the two. Inside feed to Scholl and he puts it in. Northridge increases their lead to 60 to 49 now. I think that is their, matches their biggest lead right. of the night. Yep, it does. We had cut it down to six, but we just could not get any lower than that. Ball knocked away, now a tie up. Haven't seen many of those tonight. Well, Bales is Flailing around on the floor there, flailing around. They're not Bales, I guess that was Springer. Well, they're keying in on Luke right now. When he puts the ball on the floor and turns his back to the basket, they're diving at it. He's not having much room to maneuver. Luke inbounding. Minix covered up in the corner. He'll get it out of trouble. We'll swing it over to Zepp for three. And he gets it to go. For Wyatt, that's his third three of the night. 15 now for Wyatt. Timeout this time, I think that was called by Westview. Yes, Chandler called that one. We'll take one here too. 58.4 left, 60-52 Northridge. We'll be back in 60. Tiffany's Restaurant on East Lake Street, Topeka. Mouth-watering home-cooked goodness, all in a friendly down-home atmosphere among friends and neighbors. Different daily specials, all you can eat fish twice a week. Scrumptious buffets featuring our fried chicken. And then finish it off with a slice of fresh baked pie. Eat in our large dining room or carry out at 260-593-2988 and now offering delivery within 10 miles of Topeka. Now's the time to get a great deal on taking care of your property. You need the number one rated reliability of Kubota compact tractors so you can do it all and do it right. Z-Series mowers that deliver a quality cut and Sidekick utility vehicles where durability meets speed. Right now, bring home select Kubota equipment for zero down, 0% zero APR for up to 84 months and save up to $1,400. We're back and ready to go. Northridge will be inbounding underneath the Westview basket, leading by eight, 60 to 52 with 58.4 to go in the ball game. Inbounding is Dylan Springer. And he gets it to his teammate who is out of bounds. And it's going to be Westview ball as uh, they did. Oh, no, no they it changed it back again. It's about the third time tonight, Dave. Yeah, I, I thought that it was, you know, they were trying to run that out of bounds where they pass it to a teammate that's oh, okay. out of bounds too, but I don't know. Didn't look right from up here, but Northridge double teamed there was Springer, but Gets it out of trouble. Now we have a reach-in foul called on Westview. That's going to go on Zepp. For Wyatt, that's only his first. And that sends Bales to the free throw line. And he's not missed a whole lot of shots tonight, including for the free throw line. He's four out of four from the charity stripe. And he now has 20 points.
Timeout called by Coach Radiker. So that gives us time to hear from Shipshe Automotive. Shipshe Automotive Service provides five-star auto repair services in the Shipshewana area. See Shipshe Automotive's professional auto repair technicians for advanced diagnostics for your vehicle. From suspension and alignment to AC repair, brakes, and general maintenance, with Shipshe Service Automotive, Shipshe Automotive Service, you gain a partner you can trust with all your auto repair needs. Shipshe Automotive Service also provides 24-hour towing service. That's Shipshe Automotive Service. Call them at 260-768-7119. Westview and Northridge back out on the court. Beals will tow it up at the free throw line. And he'll try to Hit the second free throw, and he does, giving him 21 points now for the evening. Westview now down 10. Oh, boy. Wiley got caught cutting a well, different Well, yeah, way that's I, it's hard to understand with two seniors out there doing that, but we're going to take this as a good learning experience. I think so. I think we'll be working on ball handling and passing. You know, we've hit, I think we've hit 10 threes tonight. Oh, probably I haven't counted them up. But, yeah, a lot. the majority of our scoring is with threes. You're yeah, right. exactly. And that's because we're throwing it away, trying to throw it everywhere else. So we've got we've to work on that. Yeah, we've hit 10 threes. You're right. Another foul on Westview as Northridge brings it up. 29 and a half seconds to go. This foul goes against Helmuth, and that'll be his fifth. So Luke fouls out of the ball game. Well, the thing I like about, one of the many things I like about Coach Pribble is he has a really good grasp of what's happening with our team, what we need to do to get better. He also has a long-term view of things. You know, he, we want to be better by the end of the year. Right. And you got to play good teams to get better. And so, you know, I almost feel better about this team tonight than I did the other night against Bethany because number one you don't know exactly what Bethany's going to be right uh, number two we come to a, a bigger school on their home court and we've hung in there we haven't necessarily played well but we've hung in there and we have a lot of ability and, and guys are hitting shots and um, I think we're going to be okay good drive by Wiley and a blocking foul is called on Northridge so we get the call this time, and that one's going to be called on Dylan Springer. I believe that's his first. That will send Wiley to the free throw line. Both teams with five fouls this quarter. 17.3 to go in the ball game. Some of the fans are filing out of the Northridge gym now, as this one's pretty much in hand for Northridge. 11-point lead with just 17 seconds to go. Is there somewhere else they need to go on a Saturday night when it's 30 <laughs> degrees? <laughs> Trying to beat the traffic. I guess. Bales there with the assist with cleaning the floor as well. So <laughs> he really can do everything. I tell you. 21 points, I think, tonight. Missed that last free throw. Wiley hits his free throw. Third of the night for Wiley from the charity stripe. He has eight altogether. Next action will be a week or next Friday. And that will be at Westview. And it'll be our first home game of the year against Cherubusco. Wiley hits both free throws. Probably give it one good effort here and maybe commit one more foul or maybe just call it off. Bales thought he got fouled. Now he gets fouled by Slaybaugh. That'll be uh, Austin's third. And as I mentioned, both teams in a bonus for this quarter, so that'll send Bales to the free throw line once again. Chance to even his scoring total from Tuesday night. Actually, he already has, so this will pass that. He does. Seven.
second shot is good. Five seconds to go, Zepp with the basketball. It's like Wiley will take the last shot of the game and it's no good and this game's in the books with Northridge pulling out the victory tonight, 65 to 54 over Westview. We'll take a two minute timeout. Be back to take a look at scoring and wrap things up from Northridge right after this two minute timeout. Around Hear the calls of the auctioneers at the Shepshawana Antique Auction every Wednesday at 9 a.m. Feel the thrill as six to nine auctioneers showcase a variety of antiques, collectibles, treasures, and more. Whether in search of a unique find or something for your next DIY project, you'll find it at the Shepshawana Auction. And it's different every week. Bid on thousands of items from pickers from all over. To learn how to buy or sell, visit ShepshawanaTradingPlace.com. Going once, twice, sold on the best deals at the Shepshawana Antique Auction. Home improvement supplies for your home, RV, or manufactured home don't have to cost an arm and a leg. Here's a secret the big box stores don't want you to know. Emma Warehouse has the products you need at below retail prices, including windows, doors, trim, furnaces, flooring, hardware, paint, and more. Emma Warehouse is located six miles west of LaGrange in downtown Emma. Call 260-593-2769 for more information. Does your paint job need a refresh? Got too many dings and scratches? Let Hyde Auto Body take care of it for you. No matter the type of vehicle, motorcycle, trailer, or truck cap, Hyde Auto Body's experienced paint specialists will attend to every detail so you don't have to. We aim to be number one in customer service and your satisfaction is always guaranteed. We're located west of State Road 9 on US 20. Hyde Auto Body, a trusted name in the community for over 20 years. And welcome back to Northridge High School where uh, Westview put up a good fight tonight but ended up losing 65-54, to 54, an 11-point deficit. The key turning points, uh, well, a section of time that was the key turning point in the game was the beginning of the fourth quarter. We hit a three at the end of the third to tie it, which uh, you would have thought gave us momentum going into the fourth, but instead it just fired up Northridge. And they came out and really, uh, really played well. We had some key turnovers there. Uh, to, to get them off to the 11-point lead, and then it just kind of ping pong back and forth between about 6 and 11 the rest of the way. So, look at individual scoring tonight for Northridge. Cam Radiker had three in the first half, two in the second, total of five. Gideon Campbell, six in each half for 12, all three-pointers. James Cranston had nine. Mason Bales, big gun tonight. He had 22 the other night. He had 24 tonight. Hayden Johnson had 10, and Brady Scholl. Uh, played good defense down there and chipped in with five points. For Westview, Wade Springer had eight, five in the first half. Austin Slayball finished with three. Caden Grau, three three-pointers tonight for nine. Micah Miller came in and uh, had a nice layup there uh, for two. Luke Helmuth finished with eight. Wiley Minix with nine. Wyatt Zepp lead us again in scoring tonight with 15 points, 10 in the first half. So... You know, a lot of lot of positives. Ten threes we hit tonight. I thought we answered um, almost every challenge that Northridge presented, but it was a faster pace. Northridge is a really good team. They're going to be hard to beat with all their little guards out there. It's not like Bales is the only scorer they got. They got right. uh, about six or seven of them yeah, out there. So well balanced in that department. Yeah, and yeah. I think we'll get there. I think that's going to be us. Uh, you know, I think you have to look at the key. Kind of Northridge's top two guys, Bales and um, Radiker. Radiker. Yeah. You know they combined for 29 points. Actually, Scholl had 17 against Elkhart, so he's right in there too. We shut him down pretty well tonight. But yeah. and then our two, uh, I guess what you would call most experienced senior leaders that score, Wiley and uh, Luke, combined for 17. Yeah. And so, you know, 
they don't they aren't necessarily uh, the guys that uh, that score all the time they do a lot of other things too but I think that was uh, one of the keys and uh, something we'll work on we'll get each of them some easier shots I don't think our back cuts tonight off our offense got as much of anything no and so Northridge did a good job of, of clogging that up and so it really made us kind of you know it's we're fortunate we shot well from three uh, to hang in this game but uh, you know I think I think we're going to be all right we got we go nine deep out there now a lot of guys that can play and contribute and uh, like coach said this is one of the tougher teams on the schedule right. and we were right there until uh, uh, just a, a two minute section really one minute uh, of the first of the fourth quarter which really let it get out of hand and we were fighting an uphill battle from there so um, good experience we'll be better for it so our next contest will be next Friday at home, first you know, the home opener for this season against the Cherubusco Eagles. So we hope to see you out at Westview High School for the first time this year. If you can't make it, though, we'll be right there with you here at LaGuanaMedia.com. Great to have you along tonight. Our final score once again from Northridge. Northridge 65 and Westview 54. Westview falls to 1-1 one and one now in the season. Northridge improves to 2-0 and oh under Coach Scott Radiker. Tonight's game was a presentation of our uh, game sponsor, Weaver Furniture Sales, with two locations in Shipshawana, south of US 20 on County Road 75 North and in the Davids Mercantile on Main Street in downtown Shipshawana. The pregame show was brought to you tonight by JNR Solutions, providing unlimited internet no matter where you live. Our halftime sponsor was Pizza Depot in Millersburg, with a new location opening soon in Middlebury. This evening's game was also brought to you by Shipshawana Trading Places, and including the Shipshawana Antique Auction, Yoder Crossroads in Shipshawana. Emma Warehouse in downtown Emma, Tiffany's Restaurant in Topeka, also by Fr Freedom Finish Works in Topeka, Shipshi Automotive Service in Shipshawana, also by Liguana, your local creative services provider by Animal Care Clinic of Topeka, also by Jerry Standard right here in Middlebury, and Southwind Flooring on 7300 North, 1000 West in Shipshawana. Today's game was a presentation of Laguana Media and the IHSAA Champions Network. Great to have you along tonight. For our entire staff here, including color commentator Jamie Miller, our engineer Jeremy Anderson, this is Jerry Host at